most of you will know the situation. You're working on the computer and you want to open a special website or download a file and suddenly this surface occurs. The computer is really asking me to confirm humanity, but before automatically clicking and confirm that I'm not a robot, I wonder and ask myself, could I really be a robot? To understand this phenomenon, we have to go back in history. At first, we will have a look on the techno technological development. As a well-known fact, in the 18th century started the first industrial revolution by the development of water and steam-powered mechanical manufacturing facilities. This was the moment when humans entered factories. In the 20th century arose the first assembly line and electrically powered mass production began. Communication technologies such as telephones and telegrams facilitated human work processes. With the 1970s, the first programmable logic controller entered the industry to control manufacturing processes. This was the moment when computers began to work in factories. Today, we are in the age of digital revolution, where even things began to communicate, to learn, to decide, and even get autonomous. So these are the four steps of industrial revolution. The story about the Industrial Revolution is also a story about the integration of humans into technology-driven systems. By the introduction of the mechanical weaving loom, humans had to work in time within the rhythm of the machines. They serve the machines. In the period of electrification, a division and specification of labor occur. Humans had to become experts of their specific production product apart and um, had to fulfill experienced work. At this point, they served the machine and kept them going. In the framework of automation, human work became much more individualized and knowledge oriented. They served the machine, kept them going and process information. As a logical consequence of this development, the humans today serve the machine, keep them going, process information and follow the decisions of the machine? Is this the system we are running into, losing our tasks and losing our sense of being active? History had shown that machines took over more and more operations which were formally executed by humans. First, they controlled just a specific production part. But within time, they assumed more and more activities. So we witness that the Industrial Revolution turns out to be an evolution with technological focus and human accumulation. To stop the running system of human accumulation, we have to put things right again and to differentiate between the basic of humans and machines. So what humans characterizes is their ability to experience their environment, cognitive and physically. They interpret they ex their experiences and they act on behalf of them. They are able to reflect themselves, reflect their interpretations and their actions, and expanding their ways of experiencing their environment. On the other hand, we have machines. Machines have sensor systems, and they can do data acquisition, a huge amount of data they are recording. And on the basis of this data, they can recognize patterns. And with this, on behalf of the pattern recognition, 
they can actuate with high repeatability. With this data and learning algorithms for the pattern recognition, machines can optimize themselves. So the question arises now, how to integrate the strength of both without mixing the characterizations again? If we imagine now a popular bike manufacturer, as shown here in the example, the Canyon bike manufacturer, who has a modern assembly line, but where it is still necessary for the employees to um, assembly the bikes manually. Then it is quite, oh, sorry, then it is quite helpful to uh, use uh, augmented reality solutions for the integration of the real working systems into virtual planning environments to evaluate working conditions, which are, for example, lightning noise and also the movements that people do, and to evaluate how they influence the physical and the psychological conditions of the people. What we gain is, and what we achieve is, that the recovery of corporeality, what means the, um, the being bodily, being again bodily involved or affected from our working environment. When we go one step further, we have the virtual reality. Here in the example, there is shown the Albedome, which is a mixed reality lab with a 360 degree projection system from the Fraunhofer Institute, where people can physically enter this uh, projection surface or space, and you can map on the surface any kind of reality and environment that comes into your mind. So, this um, virtual space is a space for discussion and planning of working processes, a place for the corporate planning of work processes. So, it is something, it's, it's a space of creativity. It's a space for social, where social negotiation is taking place, and it makes it possible even to transform a production area to a social system. If we now decide to map a factory as our bike manufacturer on the projection surface, then we can cooperatively design and restructure our working environment, such as our working places, in virtuality. So we empower the people to do a step back from their reality and to look on their working processes from distance, but still be affected of their working processes and get the transparency into the processes they're actually working in and get the attitude of changing them getting them changed. So here we have the experience of making space designable again. If we now keep this all steps in mind and going back to the reality, then we can design on the basis uh, of all this restructuring and discussion processes we did, we can redesign and restructure our working places, our work processes, um, the way we are communicating and working together with each other in reality. And so I think we get the experience of self-efficiency within our real working environment. So in conclusion, this circle of cyber-physical systems leads us to the experience, share, reflect, and design of both the reality and all its potential alternatives. After our journey through history of human and machine development and the presentation 
of the digital opportunities. I conclude. Digital technology helps me to increase my creativity. It supports me to act cooperative and to act self-determined. It helps me to expand my human properties and to be reflecting and be conscious. This makes me more human. So in conclusion, I can say digital technology releases me of the robotization of the past. So if we are going back to the question from the beginning, I easily can say I'm not a robot. Thanks. <laughs>